What do people do in hell all day? Well, I can point to you somebody who can tell you. Something that as Christians we don't give a lot of thought to, and for good reason, because it's hell. We don't think a lot about what hell is like, what's going to be happening in hell. We want to think about what's happening in heaven. But I want to turn your attention just for a little bit, just for a moment, to direct you to what is going to happen in hell. Not necessarily for yourself, but also for yourself. Make sure that you have placed your faith in Christ, but also for your loved ones so that they can know as well. that They don't have to experience what I'm going to share with you that happens in hell. Now you're asking, well, wait a minute, Corey, how in the world would you know? You've never been. You don't know anyone that's been and come back. But I can tell you a story about it. And then you tell me if I'm wrong. Jesus tells a story of Lazarus and the rich man. Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 16, in verse 24, he says, and he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus so that he may dip the finger, his finger in cool water off my tongue, for I am in agony in this flame. But Abraham said, child, remember that during your life you received good things and likewise Lazarus bad things. But now he being a comforter here and you are in agony. And besides all this between us and you, there is a great chasm fixed so that those who wish to come over from here to you will not be able and that none may cross over, over from there to us. And he said, then I beg you, Father, that you send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers in order that he may warn them so that they will not come to this place of torment. But Abraham said they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Now, I want to stop there because I want to focus on on this, this issue. Here we see this man in torment, in agony, bothered, one, wanting some relief for himself, but then also wanting someone to go back and warn the people. It's so bad. Now, here's a person who was likely selfish all of his life, most of his life selfish, but the agony is so bad that he wants others to be warned. He wants his family to be warned. Do not come to this place. Now, again, you're wondering, you're thinking, even still, Corey, that's not a lot of information detail. How in the world do you know what's happening? I can tell you how I know because I was in a place that is reminiscent. And what we did there all day long is what they'll do in hell all day long. Before I go there, let me look at another passage that Jesus states in Matthew 13, 40. He says, so just as the tares are gathered up and burned with fire, so shall it be at the end of the age. The son of man will send forth his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all stumbling blocks and those who commit lawlessness and will throw them into the furnace of fire. In that place, look what he says, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In my unfortunate stay in prison, the one thing that resonates from that passage that I understand is that there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. There was this. Now, there might have been men who did not portray that on the outside, but you hear the cries. You hear the tears. You hear them weeping at night. And there was this weeping and this gnashing of teeth just in prison. They may have had a five-year sentence, may have had a 10-year sentence. Some may have had a 30 or 40 years. Some may have had life sentences. We had those. Some men who are never getting out. Some men will have to live to 300 years old to get out. They knew their fate was sealed. And there was this crying, this brokenness, this sorrow. And what was there was this this constant regret. This, what if I would have done this? I should have done that. I knew better. I wish I had another chance. Just thinking about the what ifs, the what ifs. Remember, there are a couple places where there are a lot of regrets. One place where there's a lot of regrets is the hospital. There are people there that are sick who could have prevented what they're going through. Another place that there are a lot of regrets is the prison. There are those who are in full regret of what they've done and wish they can go back and fix things, that they would even like to warn their children. Listen, there are a lot of men who write letters to their sons, to their daughters, warning them of what they've done, what they've gone through, saying, son, daughter, grandson, grandchild, please don't come here. Don't do what I did. Try to learn from me. And then the next place where there's a lot of regrets is obviously the grave, hell, which is similar to what we see in prison. And he wants to warn his family to not come here. But what do they have? They have the gospel. They have the word of God. Guys, it is that important for you to tell somebody the severity. This is, if it was that bad, just in prison, even for myself, and I had an outdate, even though I've even gotten out early, but not at no, I was getting out early, but even when I thought that I possibly would get out sooner, there was still weeping and gnashing of teeth there. 
how much more so will it be for those who find themselves in hell? They will do this all day long. This weeping and gnashing of teeth will be intensified with the comp with this contemplation of what if I could have done this, I could have done it. It was so easy. All I had to do was place my faith in Christ and trust my life. That's what it means to have faith in him and trusting it to him based on what he's done on the cross. How easy is that to do? Place my faith in him offering a sacrifice. But because I did not, something so easy, now here I am facing eternal torment. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 